hello everyone and welcome to my channel in this video i'm going to be showing you how i made my high look kit i initially wanted to go with something symmetrical here but i decided to go with a high look kit later on where the front is high the kit is high in front and it goes really low towards um, my waistline at the back So now I have folded my fabric in two, sort of like a rectangle and I'm going to fold it again to get like a perfect square, sort of, not exactly perfect though. So I'm going to determine my neckline and I'll be measuring about 3 inches because I want to get the neckline of about 4.5 to 5, I'll measure about 3 inches. You have to measure lower since so you'll be getting a curve. I mark three inches on both sides. I mark three inches in the middle as well. And I connect um, the lines to get a curve. And once I get the curve, the next thing I do is measure that curve to be sure I have gotten the measurement that I want. So it exceeded that measurement and again I'm going to be hemming that portion of that um, neckline so that's fine. So I measure from that curve all the way down to how long I want it to get to and I wanted it to get to the end of well so I just marked 14 and a half inches and the same way the same way I marked three inches round first i mark 14.5 inches from that curve round as well so at first everything is symmetrical i join the line and the next thing i do is cut out the neckline first and then cut out the bottom of the cape So once I'm done cutting, this is how it's going to look like. I'm going to spread it wide open. Now the portion I want to be low, to have a shorter length, I'm going to mark it by 9 inches because I'm going to hem the top and hem the bottom. So that's going to leave me with 8 inches. So I mark it and then after that, I do a stepwise increase, a gradual increase in the length till it meets the bottom of the kit. I join the line and then I cut. So this is practically how I make my high loop kit. So I'm going to cut the other end at which you can attach a button and a clasp or a rope side once you're done so i hand the neckline by 0 0.5 inches i wanted it to be as small as possible so a back stitch to lock the stitch continue sewing and of course at the end of every sewing you need to um, do a back stitch as well to seal your stitch so it doesn't come off loose i hem the bottom again i do the same for the um, neckline and then i do the same for the side so once i'm done sewing i'm going to show you how i embellish that cape now i have a soldering iron which has different um the I don't know what to call it. This stuff right here comes in different sizes for different rhinestones. So this is wider. And you need to make sure you check the size for each rhinestone before um, connecting it or screwing it into your soldering iron. So since this is wider, the way I know is to place it on the rhinestone. And once I'm sure it fits, I know that that's the rhinestone I'm going to use. So this fits, but this is not exactly what I want to use just to show you guys. These are everything that came with. And I got it from AliExpress, so I'm going to link it down below. 
I'm going with the black rhinestone, it's a lot smaller, so I get a smaller piece of that um, metallic stuff. So once I'm sure that that fits, the next thing I do is to screw it into the soldering iron. So after that, I plug it into um, a heat source, turn it on, and then put it on the stand and allow it to get hot. So while that is ongoing, I'm going to arrange my rhinestone carefully. Most times, I like to use my hands to arrange. I don't like to use a picker, but if you're good with a picker, that is great. And that's the picker you can use it to arrange it but i think i move faster with just my hand so once i know it's hot enough i place the soldering iron on the stone and press down so what the how this works it is the heat from the soldering iron transfers onto the stone and melts the gum underneath now you probably see something whitish coming out underneath the stone that's when you know that your glue has melted and then you will remove the soldering iron and allow that glue to dry i continue to do that for the rest of my cake for every 10 black stones i put one orange stone one orange rhinestone just to create something different and actually it took me two hours to finish this because it was just one 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 so this is how it looks like at the end of the day and i made a mistake of not um pressing my kit before um soldering before putting the rhinestones on it so generally this is how it looks like thank you for watching